Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Chloe and today in this video you are going to learn the basics of how to become financially independent. Today we actually have a very very special guest. His name is Jason Greystone and he is actually a financial freedom mentor and I'm actually part of his program and it is someone who has made a significant uh, change in my life uh, thanks to the financial advice that uh, he has given me. Today you're basically going to be watching a recording of a VIP call that I've had with my clients where I have invited Jason Greystone to come and speak to us women about how to become financially independent. Financially independent uh, in the sense of you know, not having to actually work uh, and be free to do whatever it is that you want to do with your time. And actual financial freedom has very little to do with how much money you make. And you don't need to be a millionaire. You don't need to be rich in order to be financially free. That insight itself was like, like an explosion inside of my head because it really goes against everything that we've been taught. Uh, you know, we've been taught that in order to be financially free, we need to be rich. And actually, uh, the way that Jason sees it is very, very different. And so this is a very powerful session. I really suggest you watch it until the end because at the end we actually have a Q&A session where my clients ask him some questions and he answers. There's gonna be some questions about investment as well. Uh, so do stay until the end and uh, Jason has a private mastermind Facebook group that you can join. I'm going to be putting the link below. Uh, it is a private mastermind group so if you do join, uh, please do mention that you come from me, Chloe or Cool Girls Club so that they know that you've been recommended. I am all for women empowerment and you know, women living their true purpose in life and living their dreams in life and obviously in order to live your purpose and live your dreams you know you need some money um, at least to survive right so sometimes um, this can get in the way of you living your dreams and I think it financial independence is something that uh, we are not educated on in order to live your true nature and purpose in life obviously it's a good idea to have the finances in the back that are there to support you. Money is not the actual aim. The aim is to live your purpose, but money is there to support you, is there as a structure to support you in, in doing whatever you want with your time and being free to do what it is that you actually love doing in life. And so this is why this is a very, very powerful session. I hope you enjoy it. Please do subscribe. Please like it, please leave your comments and if you want me to tackle any other uh, topics uh, related to women empowerment, please feel free to comment and tell me below what is it that you want to hear. So yep, uh, as I said you can find me on social media, Jason Greystone. Um, if you search on Instagram there's quite a lot of uh, fake accounts unfortunately because people have kind of jumped on the back of what I've tried to do and earn a quick unsustainable dollar or two but um, that is my handle there if you haven't if you haven't uh, if you don't already follow me and essentially when I was 22 uh, I eventually uh, 21 I kept talking about starting a business and and this idea of kind of having my money game together and as Chloe said a lot of people start earning money to buy things to keep up with people and 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 kind of buy stuff that they don't really it doesn't really make them happy they're just in this kind of hamster wheel of earning money to keep getting the next thing and the next thing and the next thing uh when uh, and then on the other side what she just said was uh, she went full in on purpose and forgot to pay for a lifestyle cost or focus on paying for a lifestyle cost and i realized early on that actually to to be inspired in life to live a really meaningful and inspired and fulfilled life you have to appreciate that we need money and you have to appreciate that we need to do what we want to do and not what other people are injecting onto us and, and pressuring us to do and once we can get close to that and 
you know, do what we want to do and, and then find a way of monetizing that that will allow us to have the freedom to do what we want to do whilst paying for our living costs. That's the game. Uh, I call it empowerment of the soul and empowerment of the senses. And that is essentially what I believe is the mastery of life. Uh, when you can do that, you're in a place of being. And that was what I set out to do when I was 22 years old. I found out that I was going to have a, a baby, my first baby. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I made no, uh, I didn't pretend that I wanted a baby. I let everyone know this is not what I want right now. I wasn't ready for it, but I just said, let me get my head together. I put together a plan of this kind of way that I could really accelerate uh, my wealth and, and replace my income within this period of time. And I, I went from 20 years to 15 years to 10 years to five years to three and a half years. And in the end, uh, when I, once I'd done that, I had this kind of feeling of prosperity that like a scaling effect of prosperity, the closer I got to it and the closer I got to it, the more free I felt and the more inspired I felt and the more I saw everything for what it was and I started working with entrepreneurs and uh, business owners and I started working with um, traders and what I saw this very common uh, theme was that people were on this hunt for financial freedom but they were thinking that they were going to achieve it by earning more and more money and climbing more and more corporate ladders or saving 10% of their income and that's it or getting a pension or all these kind of things that they'd read in books and they were kind of incomplete so uh, over the years I put I, after you know I've read a lot of books and I've, I've been I've studied a lot and I've put a lot into self-development I've studied money and that all kind of stems back from when I was a kid when we didn't have anything uh, literally so I've dedicated a lot of my adult life to studying money and studying wealth building and studying all of the impartial strategies and kind of showmanship and taking out the showmanship from all these different Kiyosaki and Tony Robbins and T. Harv Eker and all these people and kind of put together a model that I believe to be the most rapid acceleration uh, that you could possibly implement. So that's what my program is. But that's essentially what I did. And I became a trader. So trading for me was the last piece in the puzzle. And I've spoken on some of the biggest investor stages uh, across the world. I've featured in Forbes magazine because of some of the innovative uh, trader training that I was doing. I was interviewed by this guy, Brett Steenberger here, uh, who is one of the most world's renowned uh, trading psychologists. And what I realized was, is I was able to... Um, write this newsletter that was uh, was allowing me to put all of my strategies into uh, you know take vast complex systems and strategies and investment vehicles and ideas and repackage them in a way that was simple to understand and could be distributed to a wider demographic so that's what i did and when i started doing that I realized that there was a lot of people uh, that was getting value from it. And we then turned that into a podcast that then became, uh, that went straight to number one on iTunes. We knocked off Tim Ferriss and Kiyosaki and Tony Robbins off of the top charts and we went straight to number one. And then the podcast was getting loads and loads of great reviews. And we got a review saying that we'd made some lady cry. And when I got that, I realized that actually, I might have a little talent here for being able to spread a valuable message that people were connecting with because at school I was one of the kids that you know I just couldn't understand what the teachers were saying I really couldn't and then, and then sometimes we'd have a supply teacher and they'd come in and they'd just explain it in a different way and the penny would drop as anyone you know anyone can relate to that right it's like someone will explain it in a different way and bang it's like whoa the, the whole world opens well most of the time things didn't make sense to me <laughs> and uh, every now and then something would drop and I always felt like I lacked intelligence I always felt like I was the the one that didn't really get it and I think being able to um, explain complex strategies in using analogies and fables and, you know, metaphors and things like that, I was able to connect with people who weren't getting this stuff. And I was get all of these reviews really, really inspired me to start documenting my, my journey and putting my thoughts on paper. And that's what I created. I created this very, very simple and easy to understand system that is extremely powerful and it all stemmed 
uh, from me focusing on what I actually wanted to do over keeping up with the Joneses and, and being enslaved and entrapped in the assumed wealth uh, by having all of the cars and the thing. And when I'd done that, I realized that actually I could earn more money. And when you focus on your purpose, you actually, you can't help but earn more money. You actually attract more and more wealth from doing that because you you just don't need motivation. I put a post out yesterday. It says purpose is an incredible alarm clock. Uh, and, and I get up every day. I decide what I do. I'm excited to do it. I want to go and help people and share this stuff. And I know that if I can do that and provide value, then I'm going to be rewarded inevitably. So all you need to do then is manage that correctly. So I work with a lot of people who are earning six, seven figures who literally cannot last a month if they lost their income tomorrow. They've got probably 1.7, 1.8 weeks uh, to live before they have to radically change their lifestyle if they lost their income tomorrow. And the funny thing is, was we carried out this experiment when we launched the program. We took people that were on 25 grand a year and we took people that were on 250 grand a year and we just leveled the playing field. We realized that if they all lost their income tomorrow, they'd have about 1.6 weeks to live before they radically had to change their lifestyle costs. And what we found out was they understood that, you know, it doesn't matter how, if you earn, if you become a millionaire, it doesn't change your lifestyle. What does change your lifestyle is when you don't have to set an alarm clock and when you don't have to answer to someone and you don't ha and you can choose how you spend the time on earth and be in that state of being. And when we delve deep into that, so what I want to do with you today is just kind of talk you through, uh, I kind of want to follow on from Chloe's teachings on purpose and how that really, really fits into a financial structure that is a absolute winning formula and this is the, the basis of that winning formula so what i found with most of them were they had this idea uh, that their purpose they were looking for their purpose right how many of you have heard that like where you go i just need to find my purpose right it's like I, i'm going looking for my purpose and they kind of put on this uh this backpack and get their walking stick and they go out looking for this purpose and they think it's this external thing that they're going to find in the future out there somewhere in space and uh the thing is you have to understand that it's it's obviously not external it's actually um although that might be your destiny and your goals and your future and your fantasies and your dreams and what you're going after your purpose is actually already in you and it's a case of mining that out of you it's already in you, and I'm sure uh, Chloe's done much work with you on that. So everything that's happened up until this point in the past has been a set of decisions that you've made, okay? And everything's been perfect right to this point because you've chosen to do certain things. And when I was talking to these entrepreneurs and these business owners, uh, they would come to me and say, look, I've, I feel like I should have much more money by now. And... Uh, I feel like I just haven't found my purpose yet or my calling in life. And I, and I, say, I look at their life and we get them to write down the answers to a ton of questions on what they do every day, what, they've, you know, what they perceive to be missing early on in their life and how, what they spend most of their money on, what do they converse about most, what do they bring up in conversation most. And we realized that actually – it's all been perfect. Everything they've spoke about, everything they've spent their money on, everything, you know, regardless of what they might think, at that point in time, they've spent their money on something that they thought would give them more benefit towards their own personal calling, their own personal passions. So we make up to about 35,000 decisions per day, which is about 12 million or 13 million per year. Okay, and every decision that's I don't even know that number 127 million per decade and every decision that we make every single day uh, will dictate the actions we take and get and the results that we get. Okay, so if we just literally go back to, you know, the start. Okay, and you start here, we're going to say, let, let's just say that I met my uh, saw my wife at a bar. OK, and there was a decision there whether or not I should talk to her or not talk to her. 
And then once I decided that I should talk to her, it's a decision, do I go over there now or do I go over there later so I can make another decision? And then there's a decision of, should I get a number? Should I call her again? You know, should we meet up again? Uh, where should we meet? And you kind of make all these decisions and it's all based on what you feel at the time is the best decision based on your, your inner calling. So, you know, when we're born, we're not born... Uh, being t in, we're not born with the idea that we have to have a Lamborghini and all this kind of stuff and all this all this money and all this business and we have to have six pack and all this kind of stuff we're born with certain things inside of us which we're just naturally drawn to like what music we like what, whether we're creative or maybe we're technical or maybe we like football or sports or music what are people we fancy people we find attractive it all comes from that's in us as uh, when we're born and whatever you think that you, you know, if you think that you should be somewhere else, but you've ended up uh, here. Okay. It's because every decision you've made has got you to where you wanted to be. And the only reason that you're looking up to somewhere that you thought that you should end up is because of ideas from society and pressures from society that are put on you to believe that you should have got to somewhere else. But actual fact, everything that's happened up until now is absolutely perfect. Does that make sense? So if everything's happened uh, till now is absolutely perfect, what has influenced your decisions if you're not quite where you should be or feel you should be with your finances or your wealth? and your income so where i want to tie this into what uh, chloe talks about is i like to refer to financial structure in the mind body and soul principles okay so i call the inner being okay so this is your your guide what i just spoke about what you're attracted to what you naturally want to do your identity you know if some if one of you might be really good with animals you're known for an loving animals one of you might be the you know the the bag and shoe lady one of you might be the the um you know the relationship as party animal right and there's certain things you're known for and that makes you you we also have a mind which is a, so so the inner being is guiding us every day and telling us we should be doing this we you want to be doing this do this and then moving us in those directions and then your mind basically is the decision maker it says right i've got this choice i've got that choice and you make the decisions and then finally your body is just the vehicle that enacts the choice so your, your body is going to enact whatever decision you make okay and that is essentially that's got you to where you are today you've made 35 thousands of decisions per day based on your inner calling going, do this, do this, do this. And then your brain going, I'm going to make that choice. I'm going to make that choice. I'm going to make that choice. And then you, your body enacts, enacts that choice and you end up where you are. And whether that's a, a, you know, a good or bad decision, okay, it really isn't a good or bad decision. It's just a perfect decision. It's where you are. Okay. So the way that I like to, uh, the way that I was kind of taught about thinking about this is, I imagine your purpose as being this kind of clouded mind. All right. So imagine that you've got this kind of dirt. Imagine you go mining for gold and your, your mind represents this kind of, uh, you know, this, this soil and dirt and you get the sieve and you're trying to dig up the, the dirt and you see these little flecks of gold in your, in, in the dirt. Okay. And what you need to do is you need to wash them off. And then you need to put them all together and give them a good clean and then melt all the little gold flecks into one solid bar of gold. And that is your purpose. And because we, we can't see it because it's so clouded by judgments of other people and what we should and shouldn't do and all this kind of stuff. All right. And then what we find is we end up disempowered because we're saving every penny we earn if we've been told we should do that. Or we end up uh, in a place where we've just got no prosperity and we're on this hamster wheel trying to earn more and more money because we think that's the way out and that's the way that's going to get us to freedom. And it's just, you know, we don't act, we lose direction completely. We absolutely lose direction. In actual fact, as Chloe just said, we need 
empowerment of the soul and empowerment of the senses. We need to be able to live. We need shelter and water and food and the experiences that we want for us and our loved ones. And then we need to be fulfilled and we need to be doing what we love every day. And in order to do that, you need all three of these things. You need to be providing value. You need to do what you love and you need to be rewarded so that you can live. And there's no argument about that without those three things. If anyone says that money is impo isn't important, it's usually coming from people who have just never had any and live very disempowered lives or it's coming from people that have built so much and they haven't got to grips with their life and they've had this big downfall or breakdown and they're like they're, they're, you know they, they don't want to think about money anymore but it's actually you need a balance of all three and when people come to work with me i want to talk about this money reward bit when people come to work with me they their bank account normally looks like this okay so they get paid and they get paid and it kind of goes, I call this like a, a thermostatic band and the, the money goes in their account and then their big expenses go out the second day and then it kind of whittles down, whittles down until they go below this kind of threshold where they feel a bit, oh, you know, I feel a bit poor, a bit, a bit broke, a little bit of a, a peasant like and then they get paid again and they get oh yeah, drinks on me, you know, I feel a bit frivolous until they go back into that zone. And then it dribbles down, dribbles down, dribbles down. And the same thing happens over and over again. This is an actual chart of one of, uh, one of my clients. And what they're missing is the whole soul, mind, and body principles. Okay, So what they're doing is they're just living and they're being. They're not being. They're just having and doing. And they're trying to go out there and scratch and claw and compete and earn money. And it's kind of this hamster wheel. What they're not focusing on is is being and they're, they're kind of ignoring their soul or purpose account so what i actually what i actually recommend them the first thing they do is go through their expenses and see what are the tiny little things track their spending for 30 days and see what are the tiny things that are causing this to dip down below the low okay so the coffees all of the kind of unneeded stuff that they that they don't really want okay that doesn't align with what their purpose is once they've mined their purpose and they've got their golden nugget does the you know does the gym membership or the the cleaner or the the fancy car or the golf club uh, membership or the yacht thing does that align with it if the answer is no get rid of it right get rid of it and the way that i then tell them to structure the accounts is in a soul mind and body allocation so the idea of this is, and I'm going to draw this out on a little um, diagram in a minute, but the idea is that we have a soul account or a purpose account, which is us, our being, so that we can, this is the account that's going to get us to freedom, to get that mind space so that we've got enough time and creativity and love to think about what we want to do every single day. We then have our mind account because we need to grow our mind. We need to have experiences and, and, and learn new things. And that also um, helps with income growth. And then our body account is just our living, right? So our shelter and food, as Chloe said earlier, you have to actually be able to pay to live. So in other words, the financial independence account, the self-development account, and the living account or your, your lifestyle expenses. And the way that I recommend um, doing this is in the financial independence account is taking 10% of your income each time you get paid and automating that into a savings account, all right? Now, yes, I've read books where it says save 10% of your income. And the problem with just doing that is if you save 10% of your income, after 40 years, you'll have four years income. And that's not allowing for inflation or the tax and all the rest of it, right? So you just have four years income. You've saved 10% a year. After one year, you get 10 years income. And after four, 40 years at work, you get four years income. So you've got four years to live off of when you retire. It's not a whole story. However, what I do is something called forced accelerated savings. And the way that works is, every three months, you increase the savings by 10%. Okay, so the allocations here will be 10% into your, into your freedom account or purpose account. I know people that call this their immortality account. And 10% into your self-development. 
okay and then the rest into your living account and then what we do is we increase the financial independence account by 10 percent every three months all right so after 90 days you kind of acclimatize to saving 10 percent of your income and then what you want to do is ramp it up by 10 percent and you feel a little pinch and you go oh you know okay that's going to hurt a little bit but you do it and you pay us this is called paying yourself first paying your true self your being when you do that you then it puts a demand on your lifestyle so you either go back and look at how you can negotiate better deals on your energy supplies you put a demand on your lifestyle and realize actually i don't need that i don't need that you're more uh, frugal with your spending and then you go and ramp it up again and then you do it again and again and again and by doing this you double your savings every two years this will give you an, an extremely accelerated uh, curve in your in your wealth building and not only that you've got an account that's forever growing instead of one that looks like this okay so instead of one that's going like this you've got one that's going constantly up forever and ever and ever until the point where you can live from the returns on this particular account now the 10 percent allocation to self-development is going to have an intangible factor on your income growth because the more that you invest into yourself and your self-development and your knowledge, which you guys obviously are, the more you will earn naturally. The more ideas and creativity you will have to build systems and delegations and automations and efficient business systems that will allow you to uh, dump more in income in. And then the allocations get greater in degree. And then the living costs are the remainder. So the idea is that every time that you ramp up your financial independence, on every three months you decrease your living costs okay and when you get to about 50 percent when you when you can get to a level of 50 percent of saving 50 percent of your income the run to financial freedoms extremely quick very very quick now the the great thing about doing this as well is the closer you get and the more savings you get the more your brain comes alive so you're not in animal brain mo mode anymore you've actually got time horizons uh, great space horizons in your mind where you can see and think creative creatively you're not running around thinking about the recession and all that kind of stuff you're thinking about what can i do next you know how can i serve people more how can i um you know how can i provide more value to the world and produce more income and you're there calm people trust you people want to work with you when everyone's going crazy because there's running around on the streets uh, you're the person that sat there calm and, and ready to deliver so i'd like you to uh, to write down what i found to be the what i found to be the three most important components of achieving financial freedom because people don't actually know what it is and um, i'm going to tell you what financial freedom actually is because if you don't know what it is you can't actually achieve it and what i found is it took two stages Okay, so stage one is what I call financial independence. And that is when you can cover your living costs, regardless of what I call the four uh, P's, which is a proprietor, someone you answer to, a, a workplace or a, a boss or a, a parent, right? A position, so a position in a job where you have to show up and you have to do that thing, that certain job every single day to cover your living costs. A place so a geographical location okay or, or a um a partner or parent or spouse or anyone that you can rely on to uh, develop that income so you become completely financially independent to cover your living costs okay to have the experiences that you want uh, regardless of those the second stage is financial freedom so the first stage can be achieved in a relatively short space of time uh, that can be achieved just by doing this and working on certain systems in your income in income strategies which i'll cover in a sec uh, but that can be achieved in very short space of time one two three years maximum I'm, I'm confident that anyone can achieve it in three years maximum the second phase obviously there's some un, there's some sustainability issues with phase one because it still requires you so complete financial freedom would be able to generate that income regardless of you so i call it the four e's the economy the market can crash and you still develop that income your expertise so you can lose your mind and still develop the income 
your energy or your physical, uh, your ability in your physical body or your existence. You can actually die and still generate that income. And that's a true legacy. That's true freedom where you're living purely passively from your returns on your investments and your managed money. And when you reach that, you've reached complete financial freedom. And the way that you get to that point is focusing on these three things. The first one is your liquid assets, how much cash you've got. And when I say liquid, I mean, how much is your net worth in liquidity? So what can you get your hands on as quickly as possible? Your cash, cash savings, liquid assets, things that take two, three days to hit a button and the cash is in your account within two or three days. Anything longer than that, I don't class as liquid because you've still got to rely on going to sell the thing. That means you've got to rely on a market demand, house, you know, even a house, you've got to be able to sell a house. Right now, it's going to be a difficult time to sell a house. Um, and there's going to be times where that won't allow you to feel free. Okay, freedom's the, the objective here. So liquid assets. The second thing is living expenses. So it's L-A, L-E, and living expenses are just your lifestyle costs, okay, and rationalizing those, controlling or decreasing those. And finally, it's leveraged income. So it's not about having loads and loads of net worth. It's not about having low living expenses because I know many, I know a millionaire who's very disempowered because they've saved every penny they've got and they haven't lived. And it's not just about passive income or leveraged income because if you don't know what you're doing with it, then you're going to blow it all anyway. It's about, it's a relationship between all three of these things. And I want to quickly show you uh, how that relationship works. Okay. So leveraged income is your asset income. If you own something that pays a dividend, if you own a digital asset, a YouTube channel, a video, uh, something, a, a little online product or service that you've done once and can be monetized over and over and over again, uh, system income, delegation income, automation income, stuff that removes you and your time uh, and, and then can be delivered digitally, instantaneously and for the same value. So those are leveraged income. Those three things equal wealth, and I'll, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Let's just say that you've got five grand in the bank, which is your cash, okay? So your, your liquid assets is cash, and you've got five grand cash. And your living expenses are 2,000 pounds per month. And let's just say that you don't have any leveraged income, and you're just going out to a job to get your income, right? So we're talking about freedom here. So you've got five grand in the bank, and you've got two grand living expenses. If you do that sum, okay, LA divided by LE minus LI, you'll get the answer of 2.5, and that equates to 2.5 months. That's how much time into the future that you can buy. So this is the whole game. We want to extend this figure as much as possible by working on these three components, and it has nothing to do with being a millionaire. It has nothing to do with high net worth. All right. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It has everything to do with time and freedom and prosperity and the way that your brain will come alive and allow you to be who you want to be in that state of being, your purpose, live your purpose. So let's give you another example just to show you how powerful this is. We're talking about someone who's got five grand cash in the bank. Okay, they've got 2,000 living expenses, and this time they've managed to develop an income that's leveraged of their time and is bringing in 1,000 a month. Okay, well, when you do the sum again, right there you've doubled the time. You've got five months now. So just by bringing in 1,000, you've now doubled the time that you can buy into the future. All right, now let's take this another step further. Let's just say the same person's got five grand cash two grand living expenses, and instead of a 1,000, they've just notched it up by 899 pounds per month. Okay, so they've now got 1899 coming in per month. The prosperity is exponential. So if you do this sum, you're going to find out that you have 49 months to live, uh, you know, without having to do anything. That's 4.1 years. What could you do if you had four years off? You know, how much income could you develop if every day you sat there for four years deciding what you do, putting all your love and energy and creativity into a package or product or service that could go and serve uh, ever-growing numbers of people? 
um, that is extremely powerful, right? So that's just eighteen nine nine a month. <laughs> We're not talking about earning 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand a month. We're talking about a relationship between these three things. And in fact, the less you earn, the easier this is to achieve. All right. So let's just take one last example here. And let's say you knock it up another 100 pounds. That's 416 years. That's 5,000 months into the future. That's eternal wealth. So very, very powerful stuff. And just to kind of wrap all of what I've just said into one very, very simple diagram, what I want to do is I just want to draw something out for you guys that I think you might get some value from. So instead of sharing, um, does, does that all make sense so far? Yep. But to me, yes. <laughs> cool. Okay. So I'm just going to share uh, another screen now. Let's go. And uh, to just say something about the less money you earn, the easier it is for you to reach that state. Like I'm a living proof of that. Because uh, when I started uh, structuring my money like that, I was like, "Oh my God, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be able to be financially free and 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 all of that." And I actually heard you talk about this system on your podcast, and and so I, I started restructuring my money like this and and thinking about money like that. And then I realized, "Oh my God, I don't need to make." 25 grand a month like i thought i needed <laughs> no, you know i, I just no. need to 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 have that system in place and, and actually just with you know right now i i'm i'm probably making about two thousand a month and and but i have that in place and it's just wow the freedom that it gives me the 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 coolness you know of yeah. when i when i talk to a client i'm not like Oh my god, I, I so need the client, otherwise I don't know what I'm gonna eat next month. Like I'm I'm chill. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And there's 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 you know advanced uh, methods of building wealth. So we talk we just talked about saving and forced accelerated saving. That's in my opinion, that's the most underestimated wealth accelerator that's absolutely. out there. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, we can talk about in low risk index funds and then we can talk about stocks and then we can talk about speculation but my my advice is to always start thinking about this as a foundation so build a pyramid don't build an upside down pyramid uh, they don't last very long they topple over and break we're thinking about building something that's sustainable and that's going to last and stand the test of time and that this will do that for you so before i just finish up on this diagram as, as chloe just said there built structuring it this way i want you to think about uh, imagine you crash landed in the desert on a plane, okay? And the plane was carrying all these kind of containers and buckets and things, and you crash down in the desert, and it's been five days and there's no rain, okay? And you are so thirsty, and you just want to drink. You just need to drink to live. And you're praying for the clouds to come over and the heavens to open and for it to pour down. And all of a sudden, on day seven, the clouds come over and it starts to rain. And you just think, oh, wow, this is it. So you just open your mouth and you try and catch as much rain in your mouth as possible, right? What you didn't do is spend some time getting the buckets together and the containers to catch as much of that rain as possible and so that you could live for as long as possible. Because what I see people do now when I get to this point is they say, I'll do this when I've got more money or I'll do this when, you know, my income's where I want it to be, or I'll save later or I'll do it then. And that's the wrong way of looking at it because you want to build this system as if it were buckets now. So when it starts raining and you develop those right income systems, you can then catch as much rain as possible. And the whole thing will work like a machine. All of those components that I've just been over will work as if it's this automated machine. And then you don't have to think about it. You remove emotion from money and you, know, you don't have to think. And it just builds and builds and builds. So what I want you to think of is just building this kind of machine. So I'll draw it out. So the first thing is this little bucket here. Okay. And most people, their income comes into this bucket and it's one bucket, which is their, represents their bank account. Right. And every month they see that they've got this crack in the bucket and 
all of the expenses go out on uh, car, terrible car drawing, and watches and houses and all this kind of thing, right? These are your living expenses. Now, a lot of people don't know how much of that water or that liquid or that income is getting sprayed over the concrete and drying up in the sun. It's like death by a thousand paper cuts. So you don't see what's going out and they don't know what they're spending the money on. So the first step in this system is to patch up this and put a little tap on it. Okay, so we're going to put a little tap on this. And we're going to control that so that we know exactly what's going out of there, which will allow this bucket here. You have to excuse my, uh, this bucket here will start to fill up. Okay, so the bucket will start to fill up and you'll be able to control what's coming in and what's going out. The next thing we do is once this bucket reaches a level of which represents this times three to six months, in other words, three to six months living expenses, you've got savings in your primary account that total six months living expenses, which means it will put your mind at rest. It will say to you, if, my, if the shit hits the fan tomorrow, I can live for six months, which re completely relieves your animal brain. It gives you a completely new way of thinking and approaching clients and staff and your husband and wife and partners it's just your brain works completely differently once you've got that in place because that is a that's prosperity is there something Whoops. <laughs> that's prosperity so once we've got that there let's just call this three to six months living expenses then what we can do is we can open a little tap here okay that then will filter down into these buckets here. Good drawing, eh? <laughs> and the way that we filter these buckets are, you probably guessed, is the soul, mind, and body. Okay? And we put 10% in here, which is fixed forever. We put 10% here, which is going to increase every single three months. And then this is the remainder. So at the moment, that would be 80%. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some in there, some in there, and some in there. Okay. Now, when we're building up our soul account, that's when we can start to say, well, when that gets to a certain threshold, or we can filter all of that into investments. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit more complex. We start to add new buckets of investment accounts. The mind account, what this does is it actually has an intangible income growth because it actually filters back into your income. So by spending 10% every single month, or you might let that rack up for a year and then go and buy a big uh, mentorship program or course or books or accelerators. When you do that, your income grows. Um, or the original job that you had, you can make more efficient ways of doing your job because you're developing in your mind uh, uh, with the objective of freedom. You start reducing your hours. You can stop. You can develop skills. You might learn to uh, trade. You might learn to invest. You might learn to develop online products and services that are going to increase your leveraged income systems. So you have this income growing, which means this grows, which means this grows, which means this grows. Okay. And then every three months, we're going to tweak this, which is we're going to decrease this, right? And then we get to the level where we're filling this up. And because we're filling this up, and this is assets, this is liquid assets, this gets to the point where you can open one final tap here. And you no longer need this income and at that point you're living completely passively that's that st second stage of financial freedom stage two financial freedom now some people like to live off of this straight away to, to financial independence so they start a 
to opening that tap and they start bringing in that income and they kind of either use a portion of that income to supplement their existing income. So they cut down their hours. My advice is if you're true to your purpose and you understand what you're going after and whilst you're young and fit and healthy and you've got a, a desire to serve people, just leave that tap off, leave it off, let it compound, let the thing compound so that when it comes the day when you go, do you know what? My back's a little bit stiff or I don't want to be doing that anymore. Then you've got the opportunity to open that tap and generate income from that. So does that make sense? It's kind of a really shit diagram, but hopefully it's kind of a, a simple way to see about everything I've just been over and how it fits into uh, bank accounts. So these are bank accounts, by the way. This would be a primary bank account. This would be a bank account. This would be a bank account. This would be a bank account and this is an investment account. And what I recommend you do is you go and set these up as physical accounts and set up the automations. So with digital banks like Starling and um, Monzo, you can actually set up these pots immediately. You can open a bank on Starling in uh, 20 minutes. Uh, you've got a card the next day. You've got the app. You can set these bank accounts up inside the app. And you can automate the whole thing. So my advice, if you only do this and then you start learning about how to invest the surplus here, that's going to make your run to financial freedom uh, you know, drastically quicker. So that is it. If you guys have got any questions, I, uh, I'm happy to stick about and answer questions. Obviously, I appreciate I had half hour to, to get through this stuff, but... Uh, I could speak about this for months. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jason. That was really, really great. Can you just clarify the, the body account? I, I had not come across that one. The body account is the living account. So it keeps your, your body going, right? So shelter, oh, I see, I see. food, water. So I, I just referenced it to body because it kind of spins nicely off of how you teach the mind, body and soul. And that's, that's, it's really the same. It's the same thing. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, everything else is clear for me, but girls, cool. Victoria, you're in the program as well. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Lots and lots of things to learn from me personally. Yeah. Uh, excellent. And the first thing is heavily based on finding purpose first and then setting goals. And that's it. And then once you've gone do that, then you build this stuff. Yeah. Amazing. Well, hopefully you, uh, you got value from that. And as I say, if you check out my podcast, you'll hear lots and lots of strategies, basically everything that I've done from, um, from saving to investing to business to leveraged income systems uh, to trading. So uh, I highly recommend that you go and check out the podcast. Yeah, no, sorry, I've got, sorry i wanted to ask something i can't see your faces hi um so i'm hala i live in dubai at the moment and i um so i have a question so for example here in dubai we have we get accommodation allowance so our company our employer gives us like you know um like it's just one year in advance and um uh, well, I wanted to ask, because you were talking about the savings and you were talking about, you know, cutting them down to 10%, 10% every three months. Um, like, won't that make, you know, the kind of things that you enjoy doing, like you, you'd be eliminating a lot of the things. Won't it be like too tight in terms of how to live? Do you see what I mean? Like what I'm saying is, is if I, I can, I can do it for three months, but then if I come back and say, okay, let me eliminate another 10%, I feel I'd be like, well, I'm not really enjoying my life because you know okay I'm yeah so so <laughs> absolutely so obviously we want to make sure that we're enjoying our life uh purpose comes first just to re to really understand what does make you happy and what you do want to do so that's why that's so important because a lot of the things that we do are just because we're subordinating to peers and societal beliefs of what we should do uh, once you know that what when i said about 10% um, the beauty of doing that is it is it puts a demand on your lifestyle. Now, it doesn't mean that you go and scrimp and save. What you'll find by doing that is it will make, because you're saving money and you've got this cash cushion 
that's that's forever growing it it makes you more creative so it forces you to go and earn more money but in a way if you're focusing on these components you don't exchange time for money you don't go and sell more hours you don't go and do the saturday you become more creative to develop more leveraged income systems to then replace that there's been times in my life there's been two times in the last uh, four years where i've got to this in my calendar it comes up and reminds me every three months to replace my to increase my income by 10 percent um about a year ago was the last time when that message came up and i could have said do you know what i'm not going to do it i can't really <laughs> i can't really afford it there was actually i couldn't afford my living costs if i went and done it okay mm. uh, for the foreseeable but instead of saying no i won't do it i did it and it forced me to go and put something together it gets fire in you to go and earn more so it does do that when i say 10 percent, i'm not talking about like masses amount so the first is 10 percent, and then three months later you add 10 to that so it'll be 11 so it's only gone up one oh, okay. percent right so, and then yeah. and then after that three months later you put another 10 percent, which would be 12.1 and mm. then 13.2 yeah so it's, it's and what, kind of, okay and what about like for example if i want to do that kind of um equation like for example i told you living expenses we get it covered like so i pay my rent a year in advance and i don't i don't pay monthly rent so how would i kind of what would i you know use instead of living expenses or is there no so formula for that? you get a year in in advance yeah. to cover your yeah. Yeah, so, so that's, that's how it works in Dubai. If you work for a multinational, they give you, like, for example, the, the month you move here, they give you a year. So you, it's a one check that you pay to your employer, and that's it. You're, you're sorted with your rent. So. And rent wow. here is a year up front. That's why they do yeah. it. It's the not rent up front? Yeah, rent, yeah. rent is a year up front. And then is that all agreed? Like your rent is the exact figure that they give you and there's no... No, so, you, so your employer, based on, you know, like, you know, they, they say this is your, this is the amount of money that you're going to have. So you find the flat that you want. So like, for example, my flat is, is cheaper than how much I have. So I get, I save quite a bit of money, you know, based on that. So Excellent. So mm -hmm. do you then have to, so my first, my first advice is to get three to six months living expenses in a bank in cash so okay. if you can do that whether you've worked that out over the year or whether you've you know you take the lump sum ha just always have that in cash forever and don't ever spend it and don't ever invest it and don't do anything with it because the soon as the whole point of that is to give you a return on the money through the way that you think and i know that's really intangible but it does so i'll give you a quick example let's just say that i'm a i'm a builder and i come and do some work on your house and i haven't got any savings and i'm literally skin and you give me a call towards the end of the work and you say i've got some problems with your work before i pay you i want you to fix these these snags right chances are i'm going to be quite because i've got no money i'm going to be agitated and i'm going to be talking to you a little bit aggressively with a bit desperation i'm going to be coming around and i'll be going oh look that's not there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that and i just pay me the money and the, we're going to get into an argument and you'll probably won't even pay me the full amount you're never going to recommend me to your friends we're going to fall out i'm going to then have to go and find more work right now let's just give you the same example but i have got six months of my living costs in the bank and you ring me up with the same thing i'm going to go no worries whatsoever don't worry about it i'm going to come around i'm going to make sure that everything is perfect just how you want it and when i'm done all i want is a referral i want i want us to build a long lasting relationship i want you to recommend me to your friends you're going to be so loved that you're going to be charging more you're going to have all you won't even look for work because they'll be recommending you'll be you'll be snowed under with work because you've got that attitude that will earn you more money more clients that will give you a return on investment just by having that money i haven't invested it i haven't put it to work in the markets it's just sitting there it's easing my brain does that make sense so the first thing is to get three to six months in the bank in cash don't invest it don't put the best you could do is put it in a high interest savings account the next thing is set up accounts like i've just explained and try to be really strict at, at, at doing that and my advice is to automate it so that you don't think about it there was a 
you know, when um, I think it was British Gas, they did a, a survey that when people had to renew their gas costs every year, there was about a 90% dropout or they didn't renew when they had to write the check for the year. Whereas when they set up the direct debits, there's like a 20% dropout. And that's because you just remove emotion from money. And when you can remove emotion from money, you don't, you don't think about it. It just happens. You've got much more chance of, of building wealth. So for your, I would say in Dubai, if you're getting a lump up front, it does require you to be more disciplined. Um, but if you set it up this way, that's the best you can do. And, and I promise you that it will have a profound impact on how you, how you build wealth. Cool. Thank you. I have a question as well. That's all right. Um, hi, I'm Dana. I'm also based in Dubai. Um, and thanks for that, by the way, it was really informative. Um, I have a question about how, when you were doing your diagram and you were structuring the bank accounts. So just to, um, just to make sure I got it right, you're saying that the primary bank account is the one that should have your three to six months living expenses. And then you have your secondary bank accounts, which you have your mind, body, and your living. But with the living, if 80% is going there and you're not actually using the 80% per month, do you suggest moving that into one of the other accounts or do you just leave it in the living and have it just padded? Yeah, look, your, your, your buffer, which I'll call it a three to six months living expenses, could be in all of the accounts, if you like. It could be split across the most. The, the most important thing is you've got that liquidity to get your hands on within two to three days, and it covers three to six months living expenses. If you can do more, then great. But what I would advise with that is if you print out your 12-month bank statement and go over 12 months, what you'll find is what you think you spend on average per month is higher because you'll, you'll get the vet bill and the, the hair and the special holiday and the, you know, the, the disaster, the breakdown on the car. If you take 12 months into account, you'll get an average across 12 months and you want to err on the side of caution. So I like to think in terms of longevity and sustainability. So you don't want to overshoot. You don't want to undershoot. You just want to be, you know, nice and sustainable, increase it by, increase it by, uh, you know, 15% or go straight for him for the 15 or 20% even. Um, but just keep it in there and almost treat it like, like it's income going into your savings, even if it's just a surplus in your uh, living. Does that make sense? So, so, so treat it like that. Try and think long term. And yeah, the, the buffer can absolutely be in all three accounts. It doesn't matter. Okay. Thank you. Super clear. Very cool. All right, that it for questions? I actually have a question. Uh, with the first bucket, the one where we start uh, gathering savings and all of that, do you have like a first top of mind advice what to invest them in? Like what would you do without money, those money, you yourself? Yeah, <laughs> like, right, what okay. What is the, the best thing to have in mind? Okay. In such a volatile uh, world and... Yeah, right. I'll give you. I'll give you an answer. So before I answer that, as any, how many of you have got businesses here? Okay. So this works in the business as, as well. Okay. So the the main reason that businesses fail uh, is because of money, is cash flow, and I think there was eighty five percent of businesses go out of business because of uh, lack of funds. Fifteen percent in the UK last year went out of business because they couldn't pay their taxes. Right. So let's think and bear in mind when you pay tax, you've already received the tax. So there's no excuse not to pay it. So something's going wrong. Right. People are spending their tax money and spending their VAT and then it gets to the end of the year. They've got, they've got nothing. So what I've just been over in, inside the personal structure works in business as well. If you think of a primary account where the, the income comes in, all of your invoices dump into this account. You then want to set up the same structure, okay, but with one added, which is tax. So you can set up the tax, you can set up the, um, the buffer, okay, you can also set up operating costs, and you can set up R&D, and you can set up um, profit. So you can actually set up five or six accounts. And what we do is every month when the income comes in, at the end of the month, we deplete the primary account completely into those. So we, we go, right, here's all the money that's come in. Let's deplete it completely into these accounts. And I would say you would have to work out what your tax is, but rule of thumb, we say 30%. 30% into the tax account, 10% into R&D, 
which is development of your business, which is just like the, in your mind, in your, in your personal account. Um, all of your operating costs, so you'll know what they are, the subscriptions, the softwares, all that kind of stuff, you put that in. And then you've got a profit account. So you can either say, again, in your business, save up three to six months expenses, operating, times operating costs. You can have that in a separate account or you can have it in your main account. And then finally, your profit account. And then you've got all of the profit there that you know what's yours, okay? Then you, can, you know exactly what's going to you or shareholders or whoever, and you know exactly what you've got to work with without sacrificing liquidity, without jeopardizing your three to six months operating costs, meaning that you haven't got to change strategy if we hit a recession. You haven't got to like scramble around and run around like a headless chicken. You're calm. You just look uh, holistically. So just, just wanted to add that there. In terms of investing, so when we go into investing, um, the, the, most, the, the, the best thing to do that's outperformed 95% of investors who have tried to beat the market is index funds. Okay. And if you can invest into index funds, you're going to approximate seven to 10% per year, year on year on year. Okay. Which is much more than the average investor can, uh, can, can, uh, can get. And the way you do, and, and the, the best thing about index funds is this, when you go and invest, and you try to invest in a, a good company, people come and ask me what company to invest in. Um, again, we're building this like a pyramid. So the, if you imagine it from low risk, low effort, low time, low skill to high risk, high effort, high time, high skill, which would be trading, the first layer of that would be index funds. And the great thing about index funds is this. When you're picking a, an investment, you want to be mindful of three different types of risk. There's company risk, which means if you just pick one company, all of your eggs are in that basket. And, you know, you've, if that company goes under, all your money goes under. So that's company risk. There's then sector risk. So you might go, okay, well, I'm not going to buy one company, but I'll buy Nokia, Apple, Samsung, uh, all of these technology businesses, which are all in the same sector. And then you've got, technology, then you've got sector risk. Okay, so if, the, if you're in healthcare or beauty or whatever your sector might be in and that drops, your money drops. And then finally, there's time risk. And that's probably the most common where people try to time the market and they go, oh, now's a good time to buy. And they just try and buy the bottom <laughs> every time. And the thing is, you never know where the bottom is and you never know where the top is. And they're trying to buy and buy and buy and pick the right time to buy. So what an index fund is, is let's just take the S&P 500, for instance, that's 500 of the top performing companies in the world. Okay. And th it's a fund of all of those companies. So when you buy a, an index fund, you're buying a sliver of all of those companies, which are all different sectors, all different companies. Okay. So you're diversified across that. Not only that, that fund is managed by the brightest minds on the planet. So they've got this relegation zone where they go, well, these are underperforming. We're going to kick them out and we're going to get new performing companies in the bottom. And that is going on every, every earning season, every quarter. Okay. And that thing is going to grow forever and ever and ever. Because if you think about what the top 500 performing companies are, it's life. It's human innovation. It's, it's human beings. It's not just an account statement. It's not a chart. It's actual people going out, solving problems for people with a purpose. It's people sitting around the table, developing the iPhone to say, this is going to be the best product. It's going to serve millions and millions of people. It's people. Okay. And it's gone up 10% on average for the last hundred years and it will continue to go up and up and up. And if it starts dipping and really crashing, we've got a problem because you know, we don't really care where we're putting our money. The world's probably ending. Right. Seriously, seriously. So the last type of risk is time risk. So the way that we get around that is we don't care if it's high or low. We just buy it frequently. We buy it every single month, every single month, every single month. And uh, there's, a, there's a famous investor, one of the most successful investors in the world. He's actually Warren Buffett's mentor called Benjamin Graham. He wrote a book called The Intelligent Investor. And he says you should buy your stocks like groceries, not perfume. And what that means is you buy every week, every week, and you buy the whole lot. 
You buy everything every week and you never stop. Never, ever stop. Uh, if you buy a perfume, you're a bit picky. You might buy a bigger bottle so it lasts you longer. So you, you're, there's, no, there's inconsistency in your buying. You, you, know, you don't like that one. You choose another one. If you buy stocks like that, you're going to go broke. If you buy it like groceries, you're going to build wealth. So this is where the additional bit, once you're saving every single month, once you've built your three to six months living costs, everything that comes in after that, you don't stop saving that increasing portion, but it goes straight into index funds. Okay. And you just automate that as well. Automate, automate, automate. It's managed by someone else. And the longer you do that for, the more you approximate the mean growth of the market, which is seven to 10%. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. Makes perfect sense. And I want if you to want to know also... somewhere where to start, I would look at yeah. Vanguard. Okay. okay. Look at Vanguard and um, check out the whereabouts. Are you from the UK? Uh, yes, I live in the UK. Yeah. Okay, so you can check out a something called a life strategy, uh, which is which they will be able to set up for you. And none of that is financial advice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. It covered really well the question. I wanted to know if uh, you recommend working with a trader or if you do this yourself. But uh, yeah, I that recommendation. Vanguard life strategy. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jason. That was really, really awesome. Even, uh, you know, I'm on the program, but I still got a lot of value out of this uh, session. So thank you so much. Uh, if uh, you guys are not in um, Jason's Facebook mastermind group, I recommend you join in because he's dropping content like there is no tomorrow. I don't even know how he does it, but he does it. <laughs> um, always putting up really, uh, really good advice. Um, and also people in the group are really, uh, really cool. Um, they're always, yeah. always, always there to, to answer questions um, and, and all of that. So feel free to it, join. I'm in I've there. I've dropped the link in there. I've dropped the link in there. If you join, when it asks you how you heard of it, just mention Chloe and we'll know to let you in. Great. Cool. Yeah, and uh, Miranda's in, Victoria's in, Dana, um, Hala, you're in, or Elena. Uh, no, Elena, you're in, I think, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's been really valuable for me, and it has definitely changed the way that I uh, deal with, uh, with my money. I'm not perfect. I had lots of money blocks um, and uh, old conditioning around money. Um, but, Jason, you've been very instrumental in, uh, in making me feel more responsible uh and and more of an adult <laughs> with with my money um and and feeling like i know what the heck i'm doing you know yeah instead of of uh, of as you said you know removing emotion from money uh instead of letting it kind of like drive my reactions to to people or to to, to jobs or to to results that I, that I, that I get. Yeah. So it's been, it's been really good for me. Absolutely. Definitely. Most people aren't, most people aren't driven, you know, it's not their purpose to manage money. It's just not, it's not. So you need to delegate anything you're uninspired by, which means systems automations and get someone to tell you how to do it, set it up. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a post yesterday, which I thought was very timely for this session, which said, do you realize that, in the UK, and I mean, in Europe at large, uh, our grandmothers did not have the right to have a bank account. And, you know, as women, we only started having bank accounts uh, in the 60s and 70s. And before that, the money that my grandmother made wasn't hers. It was her husband's. And she wasn't managing the money. Her husband was managing the money. And even up until my mom was born, which is, you know, just, just late 50s, at that time, even women did not have a bank account or their husband had to approve, had to give them permission. And so when you, I, I, just, I just had this shift in perspective, you know, like, oh my God, I'm beating myself up because, you know, I'm having trouble managing th this money. But really, like, I'm just second or third generation to have... To, to have the freedom to manage my own money, to make my own money and do whatever I want with it. And so, duh, like I haven't been trained. I haven't been, 
uh, I haven't been educated, uh, you know, like my, 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 my grandfather would have taught my father about how to manage the property and how to, you know, but no one taught me, <laughs> no one taught my grandma. So, so just to put things in perspective, I was like, wow, you know, yeah, we do have some work to do. <laughs> So, so yeah, but very grateful, Jason. Thank you so much for, for coming. No, it's and, a pleasure. Um, I hope you got value. Yeah, definitely. And I will be putting this on YouTube for the whole entire world to benefit from. Amazing. Thank you, guys. And uh, I'll see you next week. Great. Take Thanks, care. everyone.